How to knit a Pico bind off. Hi everyone, my name is Norman. I run the blog nimbleneedles.com and today I want to show you the Pico bind off. This knitting technique is a fun way to add a little something extra to your edges. A lot of lace shawls and lace patterns use it, but there are so many other creative possibilities as well. In this video, I'll not only show you the basic Pico cast off, but also how to knit bigger and smaller Picots and how to improve the basic technique so no holes are visible anymore. So let's dive right into it. One important note ahead, you can add the picot edge to basically every knitting project, but be aware that the edge will splay out quite a bit. So if you're knitting a very dense stitch like the honeycomb cable or the star stitch, you may want to bind off with one needle size smaller. And without further modifications, it's probably not the best idea as a hem or a cuff for fitted garment. Anyway, let's knit the picot bind off together. To begin, bind off two stitches the regular way. So bind off two stitches. So that's one. And this is the second one. And now slip that stitch back to the left needle. And now we need to cast on two stitches with a knitted cast on. So one stitch and a second. And now you need to cast off these stitches straight away. So cast off two stitches. Cast off two. So this is the second. And now you need to cast off or bind off uh, two more stitches. So one and keep a, a nice tension for this stitch and another one. And just like that, you created your first picot. Let's do it one more time. So slip the stitch back to the left needle and now cast on two stitches, one and and now bind off four. So one, two, three, and for the third stitch, you need to keep really nice tension and a fourth. So let's do it one last time. So slip, cast on two, one, and bind off four. One, two, three, and four. And continue like this to, until you reach the end of your row to finish the pico bind off. Now I want to show you a couple of important tricks, but before I love shooting these videos, but I need your support. So why don't you give me a thumbs up right now, leave a nice comment or even subscribe to my channel. First of all, nothing speaks against knitting bigger or smaller picots. To do that, simply modify the number of stitches you cast on. Let me show you. Before we cast on two stitches and now we are going to cast on three stitches. So one, two, three. And as a rule of thumb, you should always um, bind off twice the number you cast on. So we um, cast on three. This means we need to bind off six. This rule is obviously not set in stone and you can modify it anywhere you like for a different look and a different gauge. And just like that, you are creating a bigger picot. And obviously you can also cast on um, four stitches or five or even six. Now here's my trick to make uh, knitting the picots a lot faster. 
when you're doing the knitted cast on, you usually slip the stitches on like this, but I twist, twist it. And this has one big advantage. Your needle is already in the perfect position to cast on the next stitch, see? And this makes it so much faster and smoother to knit the picot edge, especially if you have a lot of big um, picots and your edge is really, really long. And if you take a quick look at this swatch here, these two picots were knit in a traditional way. And here I twisted the stitches and they look so similar. I feel it's really worth considering to twist the stitches to make your knitting experience so much smoother. The picot bind off will create little eyelets here. See, it creates little eyelets and just keeping a nice tension as you knit across um, will only get you so far. If you really want to close that eyelet, you need to knit the picot like this. So just like before, you cast on two stitches and then bind off two stitches just the way you did before. And as you come across this gap here, you need to lift the left leg of that stitch onto your left needle and knit it together through the back loop with the next stitch before you continue binding off. Let me bind off one more stitch. And this will close the gap here. So let's do it one more time. So cast on two stitches, cast on two stitches, cast off two stitches, one, two, uh, one, two. And then lift that left leg here, that left leg here and knit it together with the next stitch before you bind off. And this will close the gap. And here's perhaps the most important tip of them all for knitting the picot bind off. Your edge will probably look like this once you've finished binding off all stitches, really kind of curly and a bit wonky, and that is totally normal. So for most projects, it's quite fundamental that you block your finished knitting. And I pre already prepared this here for you and really stretch out those picots after you soak your finished um, project in lukewarm water or you can also block with um, the steaming function of if your iron has one but it's really fundamental that you block out those picots to really get them into shape and achieve these regular kind of spikes um, otherwise it will look like this and there's one more thing you need to consider Sometimes you want to align your picots with certain elements in your pattern. Maybe there's a decrease line or there's this nice little ladder of eyelets in your lace patterns and you want your picot to be directly above. And if you start your picot on top of that stitch, so you bound off until you reach that stitch, then um, there will be the picot will be one appear to be one stitch to the left. So what you actually have to do is you need to start the picot one stitch ahead and then it will perfectly align. And you can of course close the gap here or the eyelet, but then it will look like this. And I don't think for lace pattern this is really nice. So really start your um, picot one stitch ahead uh, the stitch you want it to align because there is a little offset. And at the end of this video, I want to address one important question. How much yarn do you need for a picot bind off? Because if you're knitting a big lace shawl and you have 400 stitches on your needle, you might want to know how much yarn you need and if it's going to be enough. And here's the truth. The picot bind off needs a lot of yarn. So the first thing you might want to do is you should measure um, your knitted, your project. And then you will need 15 to 16 times as much yarn as your project is wide. And if, you, um, if I unravel this edge here, 
you can see, I'm going to unravel this for you. You can see how, just, you know, just how much yarn, see all this yarn is needed for this little picot edge. So uh, be careful. And if you have a really loose gauge or bigger picots you will obviously need much more yarn so definitely do some calculations before you start again i need around 15 to 16 times as much yarn as my project is wide for a standard two stitch uh, picot binder 15 to 16 times that's a lot and that's it that's how to do the picot bind off I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a big thumbs up if you liked it, comment with your feedback and your questions. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel in case you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.